toast like we'll give you in the nose Get a big toast like we'll fix your techie woes And we'll break you and we'll bake you So we're all together raking And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank In the big bilge tank Come and join our fire crew in, in the, the big bilge tank. tank We will show you what to do And we'll hack it till we crack it And we'll tell the world about it And forget to tidy up That's why it's now a bilge tank Hello and welcome to episode 007 of the Bilge Tank from Sheffield on Sea. This is not going to be Bond themed, sorry. <laughs> oh, can we, we couldn't license the music then. No, no, and Sammy wouldn't talk to us. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, so we're going to have a look at some new stuff. We've got something quite exciting today actually. Stuff we love. Uh, we have a, this is a prototype, right? It's not final this unit. This is a very prototype, yeah. Uh, we have a Tingbot, which is uh, something we saw at Make Fair New Newcastle. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the guys were really cool, a very interesting uh, project, and I believe it's going on Kickstarter tomorrow. Uh, it's going is on it Monday, tomorrow? I believe. Oh, Monday, Monday, Monday. Tomorrow's Friday, then it's open. Hopefully going on Monday. So, oh, can we, oh, we've got, what are we, what are we looking at? Website. We're looking at the website at the moment. Yeah. Okay, let's have a brief so That's how it's actually going to look. So this is kind of cool because you get the, the Raspberry Pi sits inside of here and then they use a like a backpack screen, SPI screen. So yep. it's very similar to a Pi TFT. Yep. They've done their own board for that or is <coughs> it? Uh, I don't know. I think they may well have done their own board to drive the screen because I saw something very interesting at uh, Make Fair Newcastle but I can't for the life of me remember what it is they've done. But it was definitely not an off the shelf part. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a closer look. <coughs> so all they've done is put it in a case which is effectively two 3D printed end caps at the moment. It, this is the prototype. It just break out the um, IO of the Pi and then a kind of wrap around case around the outside, which gives it that sort of. Um, I suppose it looks like a, a bench appliance or an oscilloscope or something like that. It's got that kind of. Yeah, look it does about it. it. This is this is like polypropylene sheet, isn't it? But it's yeah. actually quite robust, really more than you would think. It's it's pretty sturdy, uh, and I guess it lets them keep the cost down because you don't need a lot of complex injection. Uh, injection molding tools, which is kind of cool. So they've um, switched where the power supply is broken out to the back. So there's a little PCB that runs across the top here that's sort of clamped in by the two sides. Um, that has four buttons on it as well. So you've got your interface, which are, of course, nicely positioned so you can hold it like this and you can use the buttons like you would a, a little handheld console. Uh, the screen's also touch screen, although I haven't got a demo that will show you it running at the moment. So you can, you can tap on menu items, uh, like you would in this sort of appliance. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the the Chumbi and what was it, the O2 Joggler and yeah, the things Joggler. of that nature, yeah. where it's uh, people putting together ambient computing platforms where you've kind of got something that just sits around your house and gives you a bit of information like the weather or your bus timetables, your tram timetables, or something meaningful like that. I kind of like it. I like Yarr. it because it's so um, so straightforward. Really, it's got a nice vibe to it. I think it the thing has. that kind of bowled me over when we saw it at Newcastle was it just felt a, it felt a bit more together because mm -hmm. we've seen no end of enclosures. Um, this felt a bit more like a complete thing. It felt like a nice solution. It felt like they'd done a good job, and they were nice people. Yeah, so, yeah. We said send us one when you finished it, and yeah. And they sent us one before they finished it. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is yeah. also cool. So just cool. so we show it off and play with it. Now it's ready to ready to go on Kickstarter. Yeah. Mm. You, you can see it. Great. I mean, it's great for a lot of things like um, setting up the Pi's notification display or some sort of input for I maybe a DAC and a radio station. This is probably the one station. thing that a lot of people do with the Pi. They buy a screen, they plug it on top, and they use it for a little notifier, they have an, an, an ambient computer. So they've taken that idea and just productized it and made it tidy and neat and finished, which is good. Yeah, not everyone wants to set up their Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it's sad but true. That's why you plug in and you're away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think actually the most exciting thing, like I think the hardware is good. It looks good. Yeah, it's a nice setup, and I think this, um, the kind of body of the case comes in different colours, doesn't it? The different sheets or whatever. I'm not entirely sure what they'll be doing, but we'll see when they launch their Kickstarter. Sure we'll see all sorts. <laughs> Colour um, variations, the bane of all existence. But kind of the coolest thing is actually the software, because they've written a, oh, yeah. a whole like development IDE that lets you really quickly push code onto here. So the idea is you can use it almost like a. Um, Kind of prototyping um, device, or yeah, just to simplify it a bit more. Shall Arduino we, S. Shall we try the live demo? Let's do a live Sorry. demo. The, the Tingbot IDE that. is called Tide, which um, is Tingbot IDE. 
uh, and it's this handy little kind of Python interface that's got both the ability to run your code in a local simulator and to actually deploy it over Wi-Fi to the Tingbot. Well, you can't actually see the little Wi-Fi thing in here because our um, uh, VNC session is crossed off. Oh, uh -huh. cut off. Oh, Ooh, that, look at that. Yeah, oh. that's nice. I like it when we're little and it's big. Fine. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm trapped in the desktop. Tiny so if I go <laughs> and you can't see, but at the top right hand corner of this uh, IDE, there's a little drop down box that says Tingbot Simulator or the IP address of the little Tingbot over here. Uh, if I pick Tingbot Simulator and hit run, now we, we've got a very odd setup at the moment. So this is actually our computer here VNC'd into my laptop to show you the interface. <laughs> Basically we can't capture HDMI output from the MacBook no. because they've got HTCP. Um, so we use a surface for the HDMI capture and yeah the surface <laughs> is running a VNC session on Phil's laptop because their IDE only runs on Mac at the moment. Yeah at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you get it's a nice consumer friendly thing. Um, I'll, I'll I think this this little startup that does these will uh, do well. Yeah, I suppose yeah. to that e evil behemoth over there. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah, that's the simulator. You can run your Python code locally. So even if you don't have one of these, or if you don't want to interrupt whatever you've got running on it, you can continue developing your software. One thing um, about this is um, Phil's known it was coming for some time because they let him know it was uh, going to be arriving. And literally the second he got it, plugged it in, he'd already written some code in the simulator <laughs> and just copied it over and said, "Yeah, Bam. it works." So it's very exciting about that. Is, uh, I've taken one of the demos that John wrote for, uh, what is it, Unicorn, Unicorn Hat, Hat demo. and basically just rewritten the, the draw to the screen routine of that, so that it will draw a little rectangle instead, which is this bit here. Um, and if guys from Tingbot are watching, they'll probably be screaming at me for overriding <laughs> their code and directly using pygame.draw.rect, but I was trying to get every little bit of performance out of this I possibly could. So if I run this in the simulator, hopefully we'll see... Oh, no, that's completely the wrong thing. Oh, that's the Matrix that's demo. That's the Matrix demo, so that's yet another demo. Let's uh, stop that. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. Let's find demo, demo. Demo, demo. So many things. Here we go. This is the one. Okay. Da, 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 da. So that's actually uploading straight. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, it's gone onto the device. It's gone straight onto the device. Check it out. It's kind of fun. So that is actually um, 16 by 16 squares rather than 8 by 8, because I thought I've got the extra screen space. Might as well mm -hmm. use it. And it's just the same demos we show on Unicorn Hat all the time. With a kind I like of, it. Um, it looks really retro on there. It's nice. It's cool. It's completely and utterly useless, but it's cool. That's demos for you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I've also been doing the very early prototypes of a Wi-Fi network selection tool, which I can't run locally because it's, it relies on... <laughs> very specific hardware configuration on the Pi. So if I run that, you should see it change to a dull black screen and this lets me press one of the buttons. And that is the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> Don't press that button, Phil. <laughs> Clearly I've got my code horribly wrong in that. that that's trying to um, do a modulus on an array of size zero, which is gonna give you a bad time. Yeah, we so can. hopefully you can recover. No networks. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think I've broken it horribly. This is the trouble with live demos, they never go quite how you want them to. Please, can I see my networks? Network? No. No. Well, it's, it's brilliant. It's not happening. <coughs> it's good while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, in general, we think it's really cool. Um, yeah, good luck to them. We'll be Indeed. backing it. Excellent. Right. Still oh, up. that's weird. Ooh. What? Did you just have us with us? Yeah, I did just yeah. have us with us. That's a good um, usception. Yeah, I think I think this is going to be a great way for people to get into it. It's nice it uses Python for I the ideas. I think the Pi just generally needs this kind of thing, this this platform where you can deploy software to it. And you've got a standard framework and a standard API and a standard way of doing things. A standard API it? that you work around to get more performance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yeah, standard, yeah, it's yeah. one of those. You know what I mean, there's, there's nothing yeah. really currently on the Pi that says if you want to write a game and you want to distribute it to everyone and you want it to work, then do it in this way and, and here's a set of tutorials and everyone can all contribute to this pool of software and everyone will be able to run it. I like the fact so they did the simulator as well, because they didn't have to do that, right? That is pretty cool. And it lets you play around with it and get a feel for whether it will do what you want it to do or, or just try it out without actually um, buying one. So yeah, it's kind of awesome. Yeah, cool guys. I've bought it now. I'll turn it off and on again. Yeah, it always works. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, and the other thing we're going to have a look at today is something we saw in Hackaday, which is a pretty cool weather dashboard using the PySense hat. Um, so this is basically a system that integrates data from a service called Wonderground, which is a load of crowdsourced weather data, uh, merges that with the sensor data on your sense hat, and then um, you can use that to pop, uh, populate a dashboard powered by a service called in Initial State. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is it's kind of cool. It's uh, yeah, it's a nice little project. We've put a link in the YouTube video description, um, so check this out, especially if you've got a sense hat, it's kind of a, an interesting thing to do with it. Phil set up this dashboard earlier today, so it doesn't have a huge amount yeah, of data in there. It hasn't quite been running long enough to not just look alarming. There's like slight <laughs> changes in pressure, and it, it just goes the whole range of the graph. Precipitous like, ah, temperature drop. <laughs> explosive decompression. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's cool. And the dashboard, yeah, everyone likes a dashboard. Yep. Data, data's awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea and really easy to set up as well, so good start to project. We like it. Yeah, so sure. code on GitHub, sense hat available from the shop. Yep, or, or the swag store. Yep. Um, yeah, right, by sense hat. Um, loads of great features on that. I think we featured it in a in Bittlech Tank version, uh, episode zero, maybe? Oh, zero or one. We talked no, about it. Zero, oh, that's the episode. Yeah. It was episode zero, wasn't it? Was it? One. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we looked Zero at it. It's, it's cool. The sense that's awesome. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little project. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yep. And the other news is obviously you can now put the Pi chip in your own project. Oh, they've yeah. uh, they've gone one better than the compute module and said, yeah, just put put the Pi chip on there. Do you want to kill? The, well, actually, should, should we find that? Yeah, find that post, on the internet. Uh, before the compute module was the solution for if you if you went to education and you just used the Pi because it was a cheap computer, you could then use something a bit smaller and more handy for custom things. Uh, so we yeah we use that slice uh, gets used in things as well like the auto camera which we uh, featured like a couple of weeks ago. So a compute module in there, but this goes the step further. So you don't necessarily need to have that memory card slot, that SODIMM slot. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can just say, okay, here's my circuit board. Could you put the chip here, please? And this is in conjunction with Farnell, who have yeah, a massive factory or series of factories in China um, that like doing this stuff. Yeah, it's so, obviously, it's designed for um, reasonably large, well, not large room, but medium run products. So yep. it's gonna be like 3,000, 5,000 pieces minimum. Yep. Um, but it does let you, again, like Compute Module, it lets you prototype on a standard Pi. Very cheap, very easy to get going, loads of support. Once you're happy, you know what your product wants to do. That's when you can start thinking about how you integrate that all into a single system, single board. Um, and I think part of the, the whole um, uh, setup is that MBEST Farvel will, will help you develop the, board them, um, develop the board as well, if you want to. Yeah. Obviously, the cost's involved. But and they were, uh, they were really good, um, MBEST. Mm. Total Pro circuit manufacturing. Yeah, they did a great job on the slice boards. Yeah, they look great. So. so we'll be looking forward to that black Raspberry Pi anytime soon. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sure it can. <laughs> Bill has a dream. <laughs> I have to watch this space. We'll see <laughs> yeah. how it goes. Because obviously, if you're if you're making even three thousand of a board, it's going to be nowhere near as cheap as the Raspberry Pi, where they make three hundred thousand of them at a go. Uh, economies of scale just mean, yeah, it is for stuff that is between kind of using a Raspberry Pi on its own and between kind of building your own ARM system, mm -hmm. which is incredibly intensive and hard to debug. Whereas the Pi is a really good community and getting really quite mature now. So we'll see what comes out of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting times. Yeah. So a totally different take on it than the compute module was. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, cool, and we got a couple of new products. Well, we got actually we got loads of new products because um, this week we launched uh, Pimeroni.de. Um, we actually uh, were approached by a company called Tinksoup in Germany who were interested in selling um, selling up, and we bought their stock and their domain name. So we've launched Pimeroni.de, which is also available through Tinksoup.de, uh, and added about 200 new products to the website. So go and check them out. Um, we're, st we're still counting them in and adding them at the moment, but there's loads of new stuff on there. So. Yep. Very exciting. And in this, we're going to do things a bit more Euro-centric. So on pimeroni.de, you can buy in Euros, yep. rather than in the less common in Europe pounds. Apparently, that's a bugbear for some people overseas. It's understandable, <coughs> definitely. Yep. 
Uh, and we are working on some localization for that site as well. At the moment, it is in English, but we are um, currently working on localization to make it feel more native if you're shopping in Germany. Yep. So it will come with time. Yeah. We just got to learn German it. first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, yeah, so, but apart from the... <laughs> Sorry, apart, new uh, stuff. That's right. <coughs> apart from I, made new, I made the titles, we're going to use them. Use the title. <laughs> apart from oh, the new down. stuff we've got from Tinkersoup, which is very exciting, we've also got a couple of new Adafruit products that we were bringing in anyway, um, so we'd like to have a quick look at those, because they're Ooh. kind of awesome. Need more hands. The first one is the HDMI backpack with display, so it's basically a five-inch display that is bonded onto the back of uh, a driver PCB. So it's kind of awesome for small projects that want a decent display. This one comes without a touch overlay, so it's just uh, just the display, power it via a micro B USB port, and it takes HDMI input. Um, probably the only caveat with this one is that it doesn't support HDCP, um, so it's no good with your Mac. It's 800 by 480 as well, which makes yeah. it the same resolution as a 7-inch Pi screen. Yeah, it's exactly mm -hmm. the same as that. Yep. But these kind of things are just great because they're mountable, you know, they're low power requirement, they're just easy to set up. So if you just want something, like if, you know, your Halloween costume or whatever, you want a nice little display embedded in there, it, it takes all of the different oh, You could have kind of like a beating heart or open ribs or some stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just... Doom, doom, Absolutely. Doom. Or a picture of Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> just trying yeah. to crawl out as a small baby easy, Trump. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, and then you could have some servos like kicking under the... Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah it's a cool Next week, display. Halloween costumes. Hmm. Yeah, we'll it'll think be too late, but <laughs> we'll think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, and it's got a PWMable backlight as well. So that's kind of cool. And the other thing we've got is the new Phona European version. So this is basically a 3G um, GSM, uh, is it GSM? Yeah, 3G module yep. um, that lets you do uh, data and text and, yeah. If you want to add, yeah, cellular, cellular data, mobile data, yeah. <coughs> or mobile, mobile phone stuff to your project, then phone is Ad, Adfruit's good way of doing this. Yeah, they've got a big range of these, haven't they? But um, we mm. picked this one, obviously, because it's European, and yeah. it's uh, 3G, so that's kind of awesome. Yeah. As always, you can see all the specs on the website, get an idea of how to use it, and some nice photos, and the links down below the video. Yeah, I forgot this has also got a headphone mic jack on here. So you yeah. can actually make calls through this uh, as well. I mean, we're mostly interested in using it for data, but mm. yeah, being able to do calls through it is kind of awesome as well. You need to find a SIM card for this as well, isn't it? What SIM card does it take? It looks like a full-size one. Yeah, it looks full-size to me. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. You can get adapters though, even if you're stuck with a Nano or whatever, you can get yeah. adapters for that. So You can just wedge a small one in there and hope for the best. That's mm. awesome. Oh. Brilliant. Right. That's it from us. Yep. See you next week. Bye -bye. See you next week. <laughs>